Uh, Shona, uh, you've been uh, there for uh, several days now. What's uh, the situation uh, like on the ground in these camps? Well, as you said, uh, people are continuing to pour in from the Burmese side of the border into Bangladesh. Uh, on Thursday, we went to one of the main entry points, uh, Shawar Deep, which is an island in the middle of the Naf River, the Naf River that separates the two countries. Uh, Rohingya Muslims are still... Uh, using uh, the night time to kind of come over from uh, Burma as Bangladesh has closed its border uh, since September 23rd. Uh, as you said, 15 people uh, died, uh, drowned uh, yesterday, uh, on Thursday, trying to cross over. Uh, this uh, and uh, 20,000 others, though, are reported to have made it alive. Uh, those numbers of refugees are swelling uh, in the camps. Uh, the uh, the camp of uh, Kutupalong is uh, going to be one of the world's biggest refugee camps very soon. Uh, now, speaking of the actual conditions here on the ground, the monsoon rains are continuing. They're set to end soon, uh, but we have seen them every single day. Heavy, heavy rains, uh, rains that take everything with them, that turn the entire landscape uh, into a field of mud. Uh, mud, obviously, that's very, uh, that's, that, that, that's problematic for people uh, in the streets and, and, and around the camps, but also for their structures, uh, their shelters that they're building uh, that are made of very flimsy materials, uh, just plastic tarp and bits of wood. This this is all that people have. They have taken nothing with them uh, when they fled from Burma. And uh, the little that they have uh, is being threatened uh, by these monsoon rains. One last point about rains and water. The sanitary conditions are very difficult here. Uh, there are latrines, but clearly not enough. And uh, there are fears of epidemics that might break out any day now. Now, Rohingya Muslims have been arriving every day uh, for the past month there. How have Bangladeshi authorities uh, been responding to the crisis? Well, as I said, officially Bangladesh has closed its border starting on September 23rd. However, uh, at the uh, entry point that we were uh, that we visited on Thursday, there was uh, an army uh, a not really a checkpoint, but it was kind of a, 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 an area uh, where the army had set up uh, a shop and that they had coming to treat refugees and, 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 and to take in their information as soon as they arrived. So there are uh, structures in place uh, to, uh, to, to, to deal with this flow uh, of refugees. The Bangladeshi authorities, however, are not just letting the Rohingya in. They are taking them to camps. Uh, they must they must be inside those camps. Uh, when we first arrived, we saw uh, structures being built outside the exact perimeter of the camp. And just days ago, uh, the Bangladeshi army uh, basically rounded up these people and, and put them inside the camp. Part of the reason that they're doing that uh, is because uh, they're saying that they need access to these refugees. They need to know where they are. But you must remember that the Rohingya problem is a very old problem here in Bangladesh. In, the, in addition to the 500,000 uh, or so Rohingya Muslims that have just crossed the border in the last month or so, there were already about 400,000 living uh, in Bangladesh. And those uh, Rohingya refugees uh, don't have access to citizenship here. They don't have uh, documentation. Uh, they are confined to older refugee camps, uh, those refugee camps that are still continuing, of course, to exist. And aid organizations are facing a growing crisis. Not only uh, do they need to uh, provide for the new arrivals, uh, but they need to continue providing for the older ones. Now, as you said, uh, the humanitarian situation is dire there. Are there signs of foreign aid actually getting through? Absolutely. There are NGOs everywhere. There are trucks and convoys uh, and, 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 and signs. However, they are just not enough to deal with this uh, huge number of refugees, even though that we have heard from the UNHCR or the International Organization for Migration uh, that uh, they're expecting more hundreds of thousands more Rohingya refugees to come. Uh, still, the, the, there are three main problems for aid groups here. The first is access, accessing refugees uh, that are off the beaten track and that are off uh, roads and that they ha that are hard to get to, uh, that are setting up uh, setting up their structures in the jungle or or in places that are that are kind of hidden uh, hidden just 
simply because they're afraid and, and they don't want to, to be known uh, to Bangladeshi authorities. That's the first problem. The second problem is that these aid groups are uh, obliged to recruit locally. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of people here don't have the skills or the training uh, yet, at least, uh, to deal with this massive influx uh, and to provide this distribution, again, distribution of food, but also distribution of things like solar lamps, uh, distribution uh, of clothing, uh, things like that. And then the third major problem, uh, of course, is uh, the monsoon, as I spoke about earlier. Um, now, uh, the, the international aid groups are keeping up their efforts, uh, but they're clearly lagging behind the thousands of people that are arriving uh, every day. And it is a continuing challenge uh, to be able to do their jobs uh, well and to be able to help these people that are in such desperate need of it. Shona, thanks so much for that update. Shona Bhattacharya reporting from Cox's Bazaar uh, in Bangladesh.